And we talked a lot about, you know, the traditional approach to developing evidence for reimbursement, for informing how do you treat patients going forward. And that's, that's the clinical trial. You know, one of the things that, that, that we're interested in, obviously, is how do we incorporate real world evidence into that sort of decision making rubric? And I, and I think the question for us here is, how do we best incorporate the patient perspective in that type of evidence? Uh, oftentimes, it's retrospective in nature. Um, I think the most commonly used is administrative data, which was really never meant for for research. It was meant for you know tracking costs, right? So it's it, it's it's how do you how do we take um, real world data and really utilize it in a way that brings the patient to the forefront, uh, or, or is it already baked in um, being real world data? So I think for, for, for me, I'd love to sort of understand what your perspectives are on, on RWE and where the patient's perspective fits in. That's a really great question and not an easy question to answer um, because it is evolving. Uh, but I can say uh, that, you know, very often what we, we're used to seeing is um, people looking or companies, uh, people who, who submit to HDA looking for at the very last minute the patient perspective, uh, you know, for, at the reimbursement level. And we're used to, you know, a 40-day window in order to gather information from all over the world and submit it, uh, you know, uh, within that window of opportunity uh, to the body for cons- expert committees for consideration. Whereas, obviously, it makes more sense to start at the time of clinical trial. You have to look back. You have to gather it over a longer period of time and follow the patient through. And you have to also consider that this may even evolve. One of the reasons why HDA bodies are so troubled is because of the uncertainty of a clinical trial, right? You have a very select group of people who participate in the clinical trial, a very uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, the endpoints are maybe, you know, limited or they may be so far off that they don't even consider them to be valid endpoints. Um, and, and, and really, uh, when we talk about patients, uh, but it's a da- data set that we're looking at in terms of what we're getting. It's not just the, their PROs or patient reported outcomes, but we're looking at their preferences as well. What are their values? So, for example, we just completed our first phase of a patient values project together with the University of Calgary uh, in patient preferences. And we understand that there's a big difference between what the population or citizens think, between what metastatic patients may think and non-metastatic patients may think, and their caregivers may think. And when we measure, for example, uh, overall survival benefit versus uh, quality of life, we may get different answers to that question in different circumstances by these different groups. So it's really important to understand what the needs of the patients are, depending on where they are also in their treatment as well and what they've gone through. So we can't do that in 40 days or 30 30 days this is almost impossible to do notwithstanding our best efforts uh, and and you know to do that and if we start early and work together with the researchers and truly try to understand not just the side effects and the outcomes of patients the patient reported outcomes but also what their preferences and values are that um, you know it would make a huge difference so what good for example is a drug or a medicine that causes certain side effects that the patient will never adhere to taking that drug. And you find that out at the end. Wouldn't it be uh, obviously much more important to find that out at an early stage and perhaps maybe it's as simple as changing, maybe not so simple, but changing the mode uh, uh, from an oral therapy to uh, an IV therapy or vice versa, if possible. But maybe it's not so easy to do, but recognizing, uh, you know, these uh, issues or preferences uh, early on can make a big difference in uh, whether or not a drug is approved and the uh, adherence to the drug by the patient. 